Hello, everyone, and welcome to In Our Community. I'm your host, Mark Isaac Potter, and we're visiting today with Bob Zaroon. Bob Zaroon is a very interesting person, a very giving person, in my opinion. And uh, we're going to find out more about Bob and some of his interests. Bob, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, where did you grow up? How did you get your education? Uh, what do you do for fun? Stuff like that. Sure. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, I was born and raised in uh, Santa Clara County. Uh, okay. Went to school here. Uh, West Valley Community College, San Jose State, which later became San Jose University. Yeah. I have my... Uh, uh, AA, BA, and MA. Okay. And um, uh, I currently live in here in San Jose again. I moved away for about 10 years, missed the place, so I'm back again. And uh, I have enjoyed being here and being on your show. Uh, I've been on several times before. And... Uh, had the chance and opportunity to share some of my interests and uh, things that I enjoy doing. Now, <laughs> today, I, today I thought I would talk about uh, my uh, most recent interest, that of uh, writing a penny farthing. Okay, now what, uh, wait a minute, penny farthing. Hmm. So for those of us that don't know, what <laughs> in the heck is a penny farthing? Well, Sounds many, like a monster from a B-movie. Many people do not know what a penny farthing is, but they recognize it if they see one. They just don't know what it's called. A penny farthing is a very early uh, type of first bicycle. They come in a variety of sizes, uh, from a child size, 24-inch, 30-inch, up to an adult size of 60-inch. Uh, Mine happens to be, as you can see in the photo, mine is a 20, uh, excuse me, a 48 inch front wheel. Okay. All right. Tell us a little bit more about this photograph. How did you, it means you went and got one of these things, huh? It does. It does. I, I, did, yeah. I, I did managed, you... managed to find one, purchased it, uh, practiced with it. And so, yeah, that's me out in front of the house with my pride and joy. Okay. And your wife gave you permission to do this, huh? Well, uh, <laughs> I, I had cancer and I Aww. was, I was okay. in recovery. Okay. And she was so happy that I pulled through my non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, that when I said, gee, I would really like a penny farthing, she yeah. signed off on it. Okay. Uh, yeah. I've always been fascinated with the idea of the unique design of this uh, machine, but I wasn't serious about it until several years later. Uh, now, would you... My, my first would you, opportunity... Would you call it a bicycle or not? Yes, bicycle, buy, two wheels, cycle, you okay. pedal it. So it okay. meets the definition. Um, the front wheels, as you can see, are different sizes. British inventors discovered that the larger the front wheel, uh, the less energy it took to go faster. And so that was, that was a big advantage. They were... Uh, Invented in 1872 in Great Britain by an English inventor. Uh, his name was James Starley. And he is described in, in different works as the uh, uh, father of bicycle industry. Uh, he began producing these based on a French bone shaker. Now, bone shaker, the front wheels were the same size. It was They were wooden wheels. They had a wooden bar across it on a frame, and you sat on it, as you can see in this photograph, and you just scooted along. Uh, 
there was no seat per se. So they they were uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, but he began producing them. And uh, when he got uh, up to a five foot wheel diameter, uh, that would be 60 inches. Uh, he decided that that was the optimum speed and using a direct drive pedal. This was a first true bicycle. They were popular around the world from their first inception up until about uh, the 1880s. High wheelers were first manufactured in the United States by the Columbia Bicycle Company in Boston. Columbia is still in existence today. Penny Farthings got their name due to the fact uh, they resembled two English coins. Uh, if you look at the photo here, the picture on the left is an English penny, uh, an old English penny, which at the time was bigger than our uh, American silver dollar. And the picture at the right is a farthing, which is a quarter of a penny and is smaller than our American dime. And placed by side by side, you can see how they they got the image across. Um, yeah. Prior to using this, you know, using the the old bone shaker, as I said, you could ride it uh, straddling that wooden frame. And the only advantage was if you were riding downhill, coasting, or on flat land, flat smooth land you could get some speed. But other than that, there there wasn't much to it. It had... Uh, uh, You're speaking now of Bone Crusher, not the Penny Farthing. Bone Shaker, yeah. Although bone Penny shaker. Farthings have also been called uh, Bone sh uh, Shakers. Okay. Now, my Bone Shaker, or my Penny Farthing, has a seat, has okay. solid rubber tires on spoked rims. Okay. And it has pedals. What it does not have that our modern bikes do were gears, brakes, pneumatic tires, and shock absorbers. No brakes? No brakes. No, Tell sir. Me how in the heck you get on and off? Well, uh, let me talk about some of the other things here first. Uh, without gears, you have to constantly pedal. If you don't pedal, you don't go. Uh, it also makes riding up hills a challenge. Uh, some people going downhill take their feet off the pedals and they coast, um, conserving their energy for the for the flatland and the high high hills. Um, and as it does not have brakes, the only recourse you have is. When you see you want to stop, you slow down your pedaling until you get to a point where you can uh, step on the peg and jump off safely. Uh, and then, of course, without the shock absorbers, and because you have these solid tires, it's kind of a rough ride. And so the Bone Shaker name still made sense. Uh, although they also called them ordinaries uh, for a time. So, you know, there were several names to this. Uh, high wheel, ordinary, bone shaker, penny farthing. Um, some of the other challenges is the placement of the front fork. If you look in the photo that's on the screen right now, the front fork is right over the top of the yeah. tire. And yes. that's so those cyclists can bend over the front and get more speed. Okay. The problem with that is it makes the bike more susceptible to tipping the rider over on top and landing face first on the track or the pavement or the dirt. <laughs> this was called oh, a header. And as you can imagine, landing on your head could be disastrous. And sometimes it was fatal. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, mounting yeah. and dismounting these bikes takes a certain amount of skill. Uh, there's a peg on the frame. 
and you step up on that peg and you scoot on the ground like a scooter until you get enough speed that you can push up, get on the seat, get your feet on the pedals and start riding. And to get off, you do the opposite. You slow down, you reach your foot back until you hit that peg, slide off the seat and then hop down. All the while holding your machine and hoping you don't hurt the bike or yourself. I've got to ask you, did you ever fall on your penny farthing? I have taken a fall or two. Uh, yes, full disclosure, at one point, I actually broke my ankle, fractured my okay. ankle. But in talking to the doctor, he said it was not the fault of the penny farthing. It's the way I stood. I landed. And I could have okay. done it stepping off a curb or just walking. Oh. So... I can't okay. really blame the bike for that. And the funny part is, as I was falling, I was thinking, save the bike. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So it's a you would say it's a challenge to ride, right? I, I do. I do. It is uh, more difficult than a bicycle. Uh, even even the, the other types, like a reclining bike. It's it's more difficult than that uh, yeah. because there's a, there's a balance to be considered. Yeah. You're up as high as you would be if you were on a horse. Now, how do you, how far do you ride? Do you ride across country, or what do you do? Oh that? no 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 no! I I pretty much just ride around the neighborhood. Uh, some people do ride in in parades, and those can be a couple of miles. Uh, I just am not physically able to ride that far. Are you, uh, are you, are you in there, a penny farthing club? No, there, there. As far as I've been able to ascertain, there are no clubs in the area. Uh, I know there is a place in London where they will teach you to ride, and then um, uh, they take you out on a tour of London while you ride your penny farthing around. I'll be darned. Gee whiz. Yeah. So if you wanted to fly to London, you could do a you could do a class. Yeah. What's the, tell me about this picture up here in the corner? Is this a this looks like a pretty big club? This is a bicycle club from the 1880s, I'm assuming. Uh taken in well, the pic it's not a photograph, it's a drawing, but it was done in uh for the Boston Bicycle Club. Which doesn't uh, exist anymore? Not that I am aware of. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, I know uh, people have asked me, why, why would you ride this bike? You know, there are so many other bikes you could ride. And uh, I have to say, it takes more dedication to ride this, more of a challenge. Uh, it's I I kind of equate it to driving a, an old Model T car. Uh, it takes more effort, but uh, to me it's worth it. Um, I enjoy the novelty, and and it's readily recognizable. A lot yes. of celebrities have been photographed riding penny farthings. Uh, some people, such as. Uh, uh, Marilyn Monroe, uh, the picture there of Joey Brown, um, who was an, an actor in the day. Uh, Laurel and Hardy have used the ordinary as uh, props for their photo shoots. Uh, they've also been used in advertising and in political cartoons uh, to make a point uh, for companies or, or political cartoonists. Uh, in 1884, an adventurer named Thomas Stevens, you, you talked earlier about me riding great distances, he rode and sometimes walked um, his Columbia Penny Farthing across from San Francisco to Boston. He was the first person to, to cross the United States in a Penny Farthing. Uh, in 1885 to 86, he continued on to London, took a boat to London, 
and then went through, rode through Europe, the Middle East, China, Japan, and became the first to ride a penny farthing around the world. So, uh, you know, you can do it. Uh, by the way, the only breakdown he had was when somebody wanted to borrow his bike and broke the tire. And oh, so gee. He, but he had a spare tire with him. And gee. so, uh, you know, within half a day, he was back on the road again. Yeah. Sounds pretty sturdy if it can put up with all that. Well, not a lot of moving parts. Not yeah. a lot of things that can go wrong. Yeah. Wow. Okay. What are some of the other challenges? Are there other challenges along the well, way? I think just being able to get up is a big challenge. Uh, when you saw those pictures of the bicycle racers, bicycle racers were usually started by somebody holding the bike up and the, with the mm -hmm bike with a racer on it and okay. then when they fired off the starting pistol uh they were already on the bike they didn't have to scoot to get on they were already set to go uh okay. the picture you see on the screen right now uh i like that a lot the man in front is no spring chicken he's uh he's got a few advanced gears on him and yet there he is pedaling away yeah. Uh, and those are the old wooden racing tracks that he's riding wow. on. I'll be done. So where, tell me more about these wooden racing tracks. Where were they and why were they made of wood? Well, they were made of wood because, as you can see, this one is kind of cantilevered and it's, it's yeah. uh, pitched. And wood was the easiest material to, to make bend like that. Uh, yeah. They were all over. At one time, they were very popular, even when people weren't racing penny farthings. When they did bicycle races, they used these tracks. Uh, the closest one to my house, there's a bicycle velodrome at, um, oh, where is it? <laughs> Hellier Park, excuse me, at Hellier okay. Park. Which is part of San Jose, right? It's it's South San Jose. It's off of Hellier okay. uh avenue uh and there's there's a racing track there okay so there you go. my bike um if anybody is interested in researching it uh i found a company in alameda that makes replicas uh mine okay. is a replica 1870s bone shaker i named it pegasus after the flying uh, greek horse uh, from mythological times, and I bought mine in July 2020. I have enjoyed it since then. Oh wow! Okay. All uh, right. I also want to say anybody who's interested in riding, invest in a good helmet. And uh, <laughs> I also, I got knee pads, elbow pads, and skateboard gloves. I always think safety is important. Okay. All right. Where did you acquire your penny farthing? Well, as I said, I got it in Alameda. Okay. Found it in Alameda. So there's a company in Alameda that does, that makes and makes replicas. You, you call them replicas. Yes. It is a replica, but I mean, you can find them on eBay. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're not cheap. Yeah. Uh, I've seen them for four or five thousand dollars. Oh, geez. Uh, for for an original. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. All right. And we talked about where to go if you're going to try to ride one, right? Because there's no clubs except in London. Yeah, I have heard and rumors then, of clubs, but I have never been able. I've to never seen. Them. Okay. Now, I've heard some colorful stories about the penny farthings. Do you have any more colorful stories? I know you told us some of the colorful stories. <laughs> well, I know they say riding a penny farthing is a lot like flying an airplane. Uh, the hard part is the takeoff and landing. 
the flying is the easy part. And, and you can say that about a penny farthing. Getting on, getting off, that's the challenge. While you're on, that's that's the sweet part. Um, okay. Mark Twain also said, uh, reportedly said, uh, get a penny farthing. You won't regret it if you live. <laughs> and then my personal thought is, uh, if you like big wheels, a penny farthing is 48 by 12. But if you're not careful, your next big wheel might be 24 by 7 wheelchair. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So you, I heard that you took your penny farthing to the Dickens Fair. I have taken it there. Now, what did you do with your penny farthing at Dickens? You wrote, wrote it around? Well, you can, inside is very crowded. There's very, there's uh, about 10,000 people. So I don't feel comfortable writing it inside. <clears throat> Pardon me. But outside in the parking lot in the area, in the, the guest entrance areas, it's very open. There's a lot of room there. And I've ridden it outside there. Uh, people inside that own penny farthings uh, do the same thing. And so it's nice to be able to get out and ride it, let people see you. Um, okay. it's, it's just fun. You said the inside is crowded. Where, where's the, where's the Charles Dickens Fair happen? What's the inside of what? Okay. Uh, the Dickens Fair is held in Daly City at the Cow Palace, uh, which originally was named because it was a cow palace. It was used for rodeos. Okay. And uh, it is still used for the National Rodeo. Uh, but when we get there in uh, November, because we run from November to December every weekend, uh, starting just before uh, Thanksgiving, and then we go up till Christmas. Um, we have been doing it for, for many, many years, and this has been a, a great location for us. Um, okay. There are about a thousand actors performers, uh, vendors. And so what a, are they, what are they acting? I mean, what's going on there? Every day that you're there is considered 530 on Christmas Eve. So when you walk in, you have walked into London in 1850 at 530 on Christmas Eve. And so you get to see all the people carrying packages you can see uh, charles dickens himself who during the day at various times reads from some of his works you get right. to see oliver twist walking through the streets and tiny tim with his father bob cratchit uh, okay. of course ebenezer scrooge is there too and uh you can see the ghosts now the the interesting about, thing about ghosts is, as a normal person, you can't see ghosts. So we don't acknowledge them. The only people who can see ghosts are uh, small children, drunks, and the <laughs> Irish. <laughs> so uh, people will say, oh, look, there's the ghost of Christmas present. And, and we'll say, well, I... I don't see anything. I smell gingerbread, but I don't see any ghosts. <laughs> and uh, so Scrooge comes by with his his ghosts, showing him the light, showing him the way. Uh, yeah. There are also stages with uh, performances going on. Um, uh, Rudyard Kipling is there, and he does readings. Samuel okay. Colt will talk about his new revolving pistol. Oh, uh, geez. He's come up with uh, Father Christmas is there. The children can talk to Father Christmas. Um, Mother Goose is there and she'll talk to you. And maybe if you're lucky, we'll uh, recite a, a, a nursery rhyme or two for you. 
uh, and explain them, where the history of them, uh, where they originated. So it's uh, quite an affair. Now, what, what part do you, everybody's playing a part in the Charles Dickens world. And of mm -hmm. course, Charles Dickens was a writer back in the 1800s. Yeah. So what, what part do you play? And do your family members go with you? Well, yes. Uh, I play uh, a peeler. A peeler is an early form of police officer. They were the very first police officers, organized police in the world, uh, were invented or organized by Sir Robert Peel in 1820. And uh, so we're peelers. We wear high top hats. Uh, later on, we got those hard helmets. And uh, we'll tell you, uh, you know, we were called Peelers because of Robert Peel. That was his nickname, uh, our nickname for him. But when they got the helmets, they called them Bobbies. And one story is, well, that's for Robert Peel, you know, Bobby Peel. Oh, and, right. uh, but an old um, Cockney word for Peeler was also, uh, excuse me, for Bobby was for hitting somebody on the side of the head. Okay. We still use that word today. If you've seen bobblehead dolls, you have to oh, yeah. hit them on the side of the head to make okay. them work. So, and my right. son is a peeler and my wife plays uh, Mother Goose. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. So, you know, Bob, I just want to thank you for being on the show. Uh, I'm... You know, I just, uh, I, we've been friends for so long. And tell me, t just what, what else would you like to say to our audience? Um, if you're interested in a penny farthing, I would go for it. Do your research first. There are some inf informational items you can find on YouTube. Uh, come okay. to the Dickens Fair. You'll enjoy it. And I have enjoyed my well, time talking to you. All right. And folks, I want to thank KMBT Television for having us on the air. And don't miss the Dickens Fair this year at the Cow Palace. Talk to you later. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.